And while we're waiting on Scott and George to join us, I will just say hello again from the conference committee. And one more thank you to our sponsors for Emerald, Equinox, and Mobius for sponsoring the conference. Um, Equinox, of course, is the platform sponsor of the conference. Emerald is the the captioning sponsor and Mobius, Mobius is the third sponsor for the Congress for the conference. We can't do this without them and we can't get we'll never tire of saying thank you to the sponsors. Since this is only a 30 minute session, I am going to very promptly just hand things over to Catherine for presentations. But here we are spicing up Evergreen with Chili Pack. Yay. OK, yes, those are my slides. Great. OK, so hello again. <laughs> Uh, so today I'm going to talk about um, our experience adding chili pack to all of our evergreen OPAC across our pale slash spark consortium. Um, Katie, if you want to go to the next slide, please. So most of you were, I'm going to be focusing on uh, why we chose chili pack and also some of its main uh, features that attracted us to it. Um, and other things we'll talk about. So the background of who we are as PALES, um, the desired outcomes that we wanted for um, using, uh, chili, for adding Chili Pack, um, our project timeline. So how long it took from, you know, starting user testing to actually launching uh, Chili Pack on all of our OPACs. And then I'll talk a little bit about how it integrates with Evergreen. And then we'll take a look at some of the enhanced discovery features that Chili Pack offers, have some final thoughts, and then have time for questions at the end. I hope we're eight minutes in already. All right, Katie, next slide, please. So background, we are PALES, so Pennsylvania Integrated Library System. It's 160 plus libraries across the state of Pennsylvania. Um, our name for our consortium is Spark. Um, so you might hear me use PALES Spark, it all kind of is, it's all related. We're all the same team. Um, my position is membership engagement specialist. And this position was created um, in February, 2021. That's when I joined the team. Um, and to start, it was about engaging our own library members. So our customers as PALES, we have those 160 plus libraries. And we wanted to have a position um, singled out to keep members up to date on news that's happening with Tales Spark um, and um, do you know marketing and help with the annual user group meeting and things like that. Um, so it started out more as just the, the membership engagement, but it's actually kind of turned more into um, not only client engagement, but helping provide tools for patron engagement as well. So on top of Chili Fresh um, products, we also added novelist to our suite of services. Um, it's another you know, reader's advisory tool, um, engagement tool. Um, so I'm product managers for those two things. And then I also communicate with um, the user group and, um, and help arrange the annual user group meeting. Okay, next slide, please, Katie. So what did we hope to get from Chili Pack? Um, we really wanted to enhance the library end user experience. Um, Chili Pack offers a really clean, modern look, which um, we'll be able to demo later. Um, and there's also uh, the bonus of it being a really an improved mobile layout. So it looks really great on your phone or your tablet. Um, and then additionally, we wanted to provide an additional outlet for our members and their library members to engage. So it provides tools for library staff, like staff reviews and book lists that they can share as part of their regular reference duties. Um, and additionally, it helps foster a deeper connection between the library patients and the library materials. So instead of just adding a book to a list or placing a hold on it, you can you know, say what you think of it and people in your community can, um, can read what you think and you can you know, connect based on your similar reading habits um, and then as library staff, you can kind of see what people are reading, what they're interested in, um, in your community. Okay, next slide, please. So from the start, which was February, 2021. So that was when we came together, we wrote our project charter. We um, identified the goals that we wanted 
to set and to achieve. Um, and we started to really work on um, planning out how this was going to go. In March 2021, we began user testing and feedback with a small volunteer group of some of our super power users. Um, and that was about like five or six people. Um, and we did all that testing on one of our test servers. Uh, we used LibWizard to create a tutorial of what they were looking for with the different features and it gave them that um, outlet to provide feedback straight through the um, straight through the LibWizard tutorial, um, so they could say, you know, this isn't working, this is working. Why is this this way? Um, in September 2021, we did a soft launch on a handful of our OPACs. So some of the brave um, libraries that we reached out to um, specifically to ask if if they wanted to go live before everybody else and, and see how things work and provide additional feedback to make sure that we tweak everything and make sure there's no um, bugs. Um, and then a couple weeks later, September 27th, we launched them on all of our Spark OPACs. Um, so it's been about nine months-ish since we've launched. Um, and then in October, 2021, we also upgraded to Evergreen 3.7 so we had a lot of changes happening. We went from 3.3 .3 to 3.7. Um, so our, our members really experienced quite a big change. Um, but we were able to work with Chili Fresh to make sure that um, everything worked between 3.7 and the, the layer that we had just added. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so the Chili Pack features and how they work with Evergreen. So Chili Pack is a web server that overlays the existing catalog. So if you make any updates to the catalog, it's going to appear real time in Chili Pack. It's just that layer over the existing catalog. Um, so a user will make a request to the catalog through Chili Pack, and then Chili Pack will then make the request to the catalog on the user's behalf, return that information to them. Um, at the same time, it's using the Evergreen native API to look up uh, patron IDs based on their barcode and username or username and PIN. Um, so that's how you get that single sign on um, ability. There is no need to create a separate Chili Pack account. It's all connected to your Evergreen account. Um, and I should also say only patron IDs and bib IDs are stored in Chili Fresh. There's no other catalog related data stored. Um, there's no logging of any personally identifiable data. Um, so you don't have to worry about that privacy issue. Um, we also had to replace all of our existing OPAC URLs. So for example, york.sparkpa.org became york.chilipack.com. Uh, we created redirects for all of our OPAC URLs so that people didn't have to update their bookmarks. And I think that really helped with um, adjusting to the change. Uh, and one other thing is that Equinox um, and Chili Fresh have worked together to, Equinox is our, our host, um, have worked together to automate daily bibliographic data exports um, so that they can send added and removed titles to the Chili Fresh FTP server. So it keeps everything up to date and um, they worked out that arrangement, um, which was really nice. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. So in the event that the demo was not possible, um, these are the, the features that I, um, that I wanted to highlight as part of the, the things that really have um, helped us achieve our objectives the most. Um, there's also book jacket cover art that Chili Fresh provides and we do use that. Um, we have about like maybe 15 technical services, um, people across our consortium that upload dozens of images per day. Um, so it's a really nice feature to have that ability to easily upload cover art through um, the Chili Fresh admin panel. Um, but aside from that, we have um, the Chili Pack features. So first thing I want to point out is that um, you have an online library community now um, with Chili Pack. So it allows you to have a presence online as a library. Um, it gives the catalog more of a human touch. Um, so it's kind of like if you have, and I'll show you the staff list um, 
Katie, I think um, I want to show the Easton um, chili pack, if you don't mind. So it really allows you to have that presence online, kind of the way that you would at the reference desk as well. Um, so this is what their homepage of their chili pack looks like. Um, so, you know, the way that you would, you would put book displays out, you can kind of put these book list displays out and you can kind of cover all your bases in terms of communicating with patrons in online and also, um, in the library. Um, okay. So Katie, do you, can you log in to a profile? Oh, I, I can. Thank you. I was going to log into mine. <laughs> I just wanted to show um, what it looks like when you log in, when you go to your Chili Pad profile. So if you click profile at the top. And I just wanted to point out um, besides book lists, there's also bookshelves. And those are more intended for um, private reading tracking, although you can um, you can make them public if you want to. Um, so bookshelves are are uh, ways to track your in progress to read um, and currently read and and already read. Um, and you could see also so Katie has um, users that she follows on Chili Pack, she, so that helps her keep um, abreast of all their activities. So if they do reviews or ratings, um, she'll be able to see that. You can also follow items. Um, so you can see when there are new reviews and activities on a specific item. Um, so there's really endless applications for book lists. Um, you can add them. There's a permanent URL for each book list that you can add. Um, you can share and you can add uh, embed them in a um, in a website as well. Um, and then as far as ratings and reviews, um, you really can see, you know, again, what other patrons are reading connect based on reading interests. You can follow recommended users um, and the reviews also are moderated through the admin panel. Um, so that you can filter out any spoilers or foul language or anything like that. Um, so you can really keep it, um, keep it fresh and keep it PG. Um, and also, yeah, Easton has the novelist select added. Oh, to their I was, I was, I was thinking, I don't seeing all of this but yeah that's because that's because they have uh, the upgraded novelist yeah yeah they have that extra so you see um in, right in the item record there's the it's integrated that you can add to a book list or add to a bookshelf you can also see that in um the search results in the catalog so if you if you have like a page of search results you'll see that that those buttons next to each item that you can easily add it to a book list or a bookshelf So yeah, right there, add to book list, bookshelf. So you can add it to any number of book lists that you have. You can also create a book list right from um, that button as well. And make sure I didn't, oh, for book lists, um, Katie, can you click into a book list? There are also QR codes that are associated with each book list. Um, so you can easily, you know, be on like a library desktop or like the OPAC at the library searching and scan the QR code and bring it right to your mobile phone. Um, you also have that permanent URL right there. So you can copy that to your clipboard um, and share that easily. Um, additionally, there's going to be a Although I'm, I'm probably speaking too soon, I might have yours 
back me up, um, the book list videos. So there's going to be an option to um, export uh, a book list into a short video that adds um, that adds stock music and um, makes you know for YouTube, Instagram, you can easily you can easily make that as like a, a marketing tool. So, and it's also got the, the download PDF button. So it's going yep. to uh, generate a PDF. And so you can share that file or print it out. Um, yeah. In that view, which I love as well. Yep. So easily printable, shareable. Um, yeah. So, okay. We can go back to the slides, please. All right, next, please. Okay, so final thoughts. Um, we've officially been on Chili Pack since late September 2021, as I said. Uh, so we're still really building our community on the platform. Uh, overwhelmingly, we've had a lot of positive feedback. Um, we have over 40,000 users in our consortium that are, have logged into Chili Pack and used it. Um, and so far this year, we've had over 1,100 book lists created by our Spark community. Um, we're looking forward to sharing more ways to use the product with um, our staff, with our staff and our library members, and um, to hearing all the additional unique ways that our consortium is using it, because I know that there are some people doing some really um, interesting and unique things with it. And then questions should be the last slide. And I haven't looked at the chat at all. So we've had some some back and forth of things that have been um, mod moderated uh, that have been you know sort of answered in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was a question about uh, lengthening search time, um, and both I and one of our Spark member librarians commented that we we haven't seen an increase, um, but we also haven't done um, speed testing to to know if there is any imperceptible yeah. increase. Um, you talked about uh, book list usage. Do do you in terms of ratings and reviews? Do we know how much people have been using those features? Yeah, I have a report. Um... I have to. I'll let, so I'll keep reading questions. Yeah, keep and reading. Look that up. So, uh, and the librarian asked uh, who is responsible for moderation, and Scott weighed in that um, that you can do it. Um, ha you can have a moderator at each location. So what we do is we assign uh, librarians who want to be admins. Uh, to either a single location or to a system, and then we also have some some consortial level uh, admins, so so we can do that. And then there was a question about covers. Um, we uh, do uh, covers through Chili Pack. I I, I think there would be a way to use a different third party provider if you if you wanted to. Um, I'll let Scott and Eros weigh in on that, but, and we do um, then also add additional covers into that. Um, and there's an option for um, custom book covers as well. So uh, anything with a UPC or we will we'll generate uh, faux UPCs for libraries. And so if they have a custom kit or, uh, you know, a realia kind of thing that they want a photo of, they can actually upload those photos of the individual item. Uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, and Scott is noting that um, you can use different book jacket vendors, um, but they they have uh, a, a tens of millions, in, you know, in their existing database. And then, as he said, we can we can you know scan, we can take photos, um, mm -hmm. and we can we can upload for things that uh, that aren't available. So yes, yeah. we do. We enjoy it very much. <laughs> yeah, and a great a great example is um, from that same Easton area public library. Um, they made this resource for kids about COVID, and it was like a just like a kind of stapled little book booklet. And we were able to add a fun cover to that um, directly through that uploading in the admin admin panel um, by connecting it with a a faux UPC. You. 
uh, Scott, are are there UPCs already in the in the database? I know we can add them. Okay, yeah, AV game and music images as well in the database, and those are going to come through the the UPC search. Um, I was looking for if I could find easily the one that um, Catherine mentioned, but I'm I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to go on a, <laughs> I, on a, have to go uh, back a fishing expedition. The, yeah, I'd have to go back through the tickets. Um, and I, I just was looking at the reviews. So, so far this year, we've had 65 um, reviews written in our consortium. And uh, we have some questions in the chat about pricing. I will say that I am thrilled that Chili Pack are, as a company, are exhibiting here. And so you can drop in on them um in the in the expo hall and request more information and um get some some more details on uh, on how they calculate their their pricing Uris and scott did you guys want to add anything else that we haven't mentioned oh and if you if you guys can can uh, elaborate more on this but we are uh we just started the process of upgrading uh updating chili pack to work with boo pack so we are hoping to to roll that out later in 2022. So uh, for those libraries uh, thinking about that uh, advancement in Evergreen, that's that's going to be ready as well. Yeah, if you're. Okay. Yeah, I, I just can you hear me? <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah, hi everyone. Yeah, so I think uh, Catherine did amazing presentation. So I have not. <laughs> not much to add <laughs> yeah so uh, like she mentioned we are also rolling out uh, features uh, like uh, as soon as they become ready and this one feature that's coming up it will be if you have heard about this book talk or promoting books on uh, like TikTok and social media so we will also have an automated like video creation that your libraries can basically click create a video at any of the book lists and it will create a video that you can just upload and share that way catch more of your like uh, user and patron eyes on social media other than that i think yeah also all, all the questions have been also answered mm -hmm. yes yeah, so thank Great. you Catherine. yeah thank you anything else yeah visit their booth and they're wonderful people <laughs> yeah i mean we've had a, a great experience working with them and uh we were i believe the first uh evergreen consortium uh to add this particular package and so um we've had a lot of back and forth with with them as well as our hosting provider to to be able to get everything uh working and it's all gone gone really well yep there was yeah, a question earlier about uh, privacy that did get answered in the chat, but um, the the book lists are set to private by default. Um, users with existing book lists in, that are evergreen book lists, they're going to be ported over to the Chili Pack book lists. And I believe the the privacy setting on the evergreen book list then tr transferred over. So if you have you know staff lists or things like that, those are still going to be um, those are still going to be visible. If you mm -hmm. if you use a product like this, are you will you guys be at ALA? Scott is typing. I guess the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looks like no. So not not this year. Okay. Um. What was the main sticking point that you all decided you wanted to go beyond that? Um, I think it was a lot of it was the look of it. Um, so when we added Chili Pack, we actually had a we also had a different executive director. Um, so I can't exactly speak to what um, she was looking for. Maybe I don't know, Scott, you want to. Um, but um yeah definitely the look of it how how clean and modern it is how you're able to easily change um the color themes through the admin panel um and then also just i don't know again just the the online like sort of community adding that extra layer of presence for our libraries um 
the ratings and reviews are really, they're really, and the booklets especially are really fun. Well, can I add one, one more thing? Uh, I think mm -hmm. there was uh, this uh, speed uh, question uh, mentioned before. Uh, I just want to say that we do like external speed testing and comparing the load times between the original Evergreen catalog and after we have added Chili Pack to it. Uh, and uh, the basically the overhead that Chili Pack adds is between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 seconds. So it's it's invisible to the user. Yeah, I remember we did that testing right when we first um, started working together just to make sure there wasn't a great lag that was happening. I like the inclusion of Novelis, but we found it did not transfer well to our current version 3.7. We can see it in OPAC, but not staff client. Mm -hmm. So Kathleen, we have a few libraries that have uh, Novelis selects, uh, but w but what we have for the entire consortium is plus, which is not integrated into the OPAC. So that's not something we've dealt with as much with a consortium. I think there were some things that we did have to tweak for our for our Novelis selects libraries. Um, yeah, yeah. I so think we you... have a couple a couple Novelis select libraries, but everybody else is just that separate um, that Novelis plus. Um, which is on that separate platform. Okay. Well, Catherine, excellent presentation and amazing timing because we are only three minutes over and we do have a break uh, next. We have time to go visit our exhibitors. Um, so thank you to Scott and Uris for being here. I really appreciate you participating in the Evergreen community and uh, definitely swing by their booth if you are interested or uh, feel free to reach out to Catherine, which I should put her slide up. <laughs> if you uh, feel free to reach out to Catherine as well if you have any questions about um, the way that we do things in Pales. Yeah, I'd be glad to talk to you. And thank you, Katie, for sharing my slides and helping me with this uh, technical disaster. <laughs> <laughs> there's, all, there's always something. There's always I know. Something. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. You too.